Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, continuing talking about gravity as part of the course called Physics 14 presented on Unizor.com. Um, I do suggest you to watch this lecture from the website. Uh, there is a very uh, detailed menu so you can actually take the course um, in sequence of topics the way how they're logically following each other. Also on the same website you can find other courses like for instance Mass 14 or US Law 14s. Um, now the site is free, there are no advertising, so it's just the source of good knowledge. Now, um, so one of the things about gravity is that this is the source of the weight which we all know what it is, obviously. Well, do we? Uh, well, let's start with a definition of what is actually weight. Weight is the force of gravity of the planet, uh, which, uh, when it attracts certain objects. So that's what the weight of this object is. Again, the weight of the object is the force of the gravity of the planet um, extended towards this particular object. So, it's a function of two things, the object itself and the planet. If you change the planet of the same object, put it on a different planet, it will weigh differently. So, that's very important to understand. Weight is not absolute. Weight is always related to certain planet uh, this weight is uh, positioned upon. Now, um, just for example, if you will take the same object on Earth and put it on the Moon, the weight on the Moon will be about six times less because the gravity of the Moon is about one-sixth of the gravity of the, of the Earth. Next. Now, do we feel weight? Well, some people might say yes, but actually the answer is not exactly. We don't really feel the weight which is a gravity. We feel the result of this. Whenever we are standing on, on the floor, for instance, we feel the reaction of the floor. If there, are, if there is no floor, we will just fall down and during our fall we will not feel any weight. For instance, just imagine yourself in the elevator and elevator all of the sound uh, all of the sudden just you know break all these cables and it just falls down by itself you will feel that you are falling down but you will feel no weight because there is nothing which supports you from below and pushes you up so whenever you think that you are feeling the weight you are actually feeling the reaction of the gravity force um, uh, uh, reaction caused by the by, by the gravity and reaction is necessary for you to stand in place so I'm standing right now on the floor I feel the floor actually pushing up to my uh, to my feet at the same time every organ is also in place it doesn't move up or down which means that whatever the weight of this organ is this gravity is uh, always reacted upon by something from below it, from muscles, from skeleton, etc. So the whole uh, sensation of weight is actually the sensation of the reaction to the gravity, not the gravity itself. We don't feel gravity. We can be within the gravitational field of the Earth, but if we are falling down, like parachutist, for instance, uh, before the parachute is open, then we don't feel any weight. We feel weightless. So that's actually what weightless means. Weightless means not the absence of the gravity. It's absence of the sensation of gravity. And the sensation of gravity is always caused by certain reaction of the force um, from, from, from below, actually. Well, if I can say below, considering your planet is down there. So always the reaction force which we feel. We feel tactile things but not the gravity itself. Gravity is not, we don't have a, a sense of gravity, we have a sense of touching, we have sense of smell, etc. but not sense of, no sense of gravity. Okay, next. Um, let's talk about the weightlessness in the spaceship. 
So we can consider a spaceship which is circulating around the Earth um, and people feel weightless there uh, if there are no engines running obviously. So we, we just launch this particular uh, spaceship on the orbit let's say it's an international space station which which everybody knows is somewhere there in the sky so this international space station is circulating on a relatively constant orbit around the earth and people on this station feel weightless why here is a very simple explanation if you understand that if you are in a falling elevator that you don't really feel weight with a spaceship it's exactly the same thing here is the earth hmm. how about this here is the earth the blue planet now here is our spaceship which is circulating on a circular orbit this is the orbit now what happens if engines are not running this spaceship participates in two different uh, motions one of uh, motion is inertial motion it just goes tangential to the uh, orbit another motion caused by the gravity is just falling down towards Earth. So, simultaneously when these two things are happening, when on one hand it's tangentially moving uh, by inertia, uh, uh, tangential to the orbit, and at the same time falling down to the Earth, that's what makes this orbit uh, circular. So it's trying if you will consider infinitesimal moment of time, during this moment of time it goes parallel, uh, uh, tangential to, to the circle uh, of the orbit and at the same time falling a little bit down. And that's what makes this uh, uh, orbit circular. So, both of these things do not have anything like reaction which, which, can, which, which we can feel. Obviously, if we are uh, moving by inertia tangentially to a circle, there, there is no, no, no reaction, nothing pushes uh, onto us. And when we are falling down, as we know, like for instance in the falling elevator, we don't feel. So there is no, um, no support which we are actually can feel with our tactile feelings. So that's why um, everybody feels weightless in the um, in the spaceship. It's basically constantly falling towards the Earth, and only its linear speed helps uh, to uh, to keep the distance from the Earth um, constant. So we are falling down and moving tangentially, and as a result, we have this. And obviously, these two movements are related in such a way that the distance from the Earth remain the same. And we have already made certain calculations about how to do it. What kind of a speed is necessary? It was one of the previous lectures. It was what kind of speed is necessary to maintain the same distance from the Earth. So that's basically the source of weightlessness in the spaceship. Okay, now let's go back to some more uh, mathematical aspects of this thing. So let me remind you again the law of uh, uh, of universal gravity. There is a gravitational constant and we know that the force of gravity is proportional to mass of uh, let's say planet times mass of the object and it's uh, reversely, uh, inversely proportional to the uh, radius of the planet if our object is on the surface of the of the planet and we are assuming obviously that the planet is spherical and there is such a um, so this is basically the weight weight is the force um, force on the planet 
the force w w w which the planet attracts the uh, uh, the object of mass m. Okay, that's fine. Now, obviously, from this we see the different planets with different m and r um, attract the same object m differently. So that's why the weight is different. It depends on the planet. Now, from this, since we know the weight, uh, we can definitely determine um, what's the acceleration of the free fall, right, on the surface of this particular planet. It's W divided by M. This is acceleration, and it's GM divided by R squared. Now, this is a constant for a planet, right? For planet Earth, for instance, well, G is a constant uh, unconditionally. M, we know the mass of the Earth, and R, we know the radius of the Earth, right? Again, we are assuming that this is relatively circular, spherical kind of form. Um, and we can basically calculate it. Now, if we calculate this value, we can always find the weight as my, uh, mass times this particular acceleration, right, of the free fall. Now, traditionally, um, the acceleration of the free fall on Earth is uh, symbolized by letter G, and it's approximately 9.807 meters to second square. So I can use G here, and this is the weight on the planet Earth of an object of mass um, M, lowercase m. Well, usually this even abbreviated even um, shorter to 9.8 or even 10 sometimes, just to make things more rounded. But 9.8 probably would be a good approximation. All right, now, this is on Earth, 9.8. How about other planets? Well, I will give you a couple of numbers, but obviously for each planet, it has its own mass and its own radius, and obviously we will have different uh, acceleration of the free fall, which means different acceleration results in different weight, right? Since weight is equal to mass times this acceleration, so different acceleration, which is a characteristic of the planet. You see, this is weight, is a characteristic of both function, it's a function of both arguments, mass of the object and characteristic of the planet mass and the radius. Now, but we are talking about a concrete uh, planet. We can characterize the planet just by planet's um, characteristics. Uh, and then the weight will be just the multiplication of the mass by this free fall acceleration. So, on Sun, Sun is big, right? And very heavy, obviously. So, on Sun, this particular acceleration approximately equals to 274 times 1 meters to second square, which is about 28 times greater than on Earth, which means that every object on Sun would weight 28 times greater than on Earth. Well, before it burns out, obviously. <laughs> Sun is too hot to have any object on it. Now, uh, on Jupiter, well, Jupiter is a very big planet, much bigger than Earth. However, don't forget this very important fact. If you are expanding the planet geometrically, so it's, it has a greater radius, let's say it doubles the radius, now, its mass, well, considering you have the same density, its mass is increasing uh, by the factor of 8, right? 2 to the third degree, the cube function, right? Double the size, uh, 8 times greater the volume, and therefore the mass, if density is the same. So, this is increased by 8 if we double the size. Now, but radius is also increased by the, by, by the factor of 2, right? We're talking about geometrically growing. So R square would be 
two square which is which is four so mass is increasing by the factor of eight radius is increasing by the radi by the fa factor of four so the result will be eight divided by four two so it looks like the force of gravity is proportional to the geometrical size right so we double the size eight times the mass four times the r square and the result is again two the same as i have uh, increased the geometrical proportion so jupiter is much greater than earth actually more than twice yeah, I, I don't remember but my, maybe more than three or four times even but maybe there is a different density so it's kind of difficult to say based on just these if we don't know the contents of the of the density of the er, of the Jupiter. Well, the calculations show anyway that this is approximately 25 times 93 meters per second square, which is about 2.6 times. So it's almost three, well, less than three times heavier than on Earth. So any object will be heavier on Jupiter because it's a giant planet, much bigger than Earth but not that much as I personally would expect it. I would expect like 10 times greater. No, it's only 2.6 times. Again, because the, uh, not just the mass, which is important, the radius is also important. So on the surface of the Jupiter, you are further from the center, and that's why your gravity is decreasing when you're moving outside. The, the, the further you are from the center, the, the, the less the force of gravity is. So mass is one thing, radius is another, but as a result we have this particular ratio. And the last number I have is for moon. It's 1.625, which is approximately one-sixth of the 9.8 um, of Earth. So this number, acceleration of the free fall is about one sixth of that of the Earth, so the, um, things will be lighter about by a factor of six uh, on the Moon than on the um, on the Earth. All right, fine. That is done. Now let's think about how do we measure the weight. We know all these formulas, of course. This is great, but uh, what these formulas are usually give you is the weight as the force and the force in the system C uh, is measured in Newtons, right? Newtons. So G has uh, something like 6, 674 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Newton divided by kilogram square meter square, right? So this is kilogram and kilogram that would uh, cancel this one and the meter square would cancel this one. So if my mass is in kilograms and my radius is in meters and my G is my universal constant is this, the result will be the weight in Newtons. Now, who measures weight in Newtons nowadays? We, we don't. So let's talk about units of measurement of weight. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, it doesn't really matter. The fact is, the weight is measured in pounds and kilograms, right? However, that's, uh, especially about kilograms, that's not exactly um, the correct way of doing it because kilogram was introduced as the unit of mass, not the unit of weight. So, we are talking not just about any kilogram, we are talking about kilogram of force. Kilogram of force, and this is abbreviation, not kg, but kgf. And this is the weight on Earth of object of one kilogram of mass which is actually one kilogram times uh, 9.8 meter 
second square, which is 9.8 newtons. So one kilogram of force is equal to 9.8 newtons. So the weights, if the weights are in kilograms, then this is basically your conversion. But again, there are no weights actually which have a scale in newtons. There are weights in, in kilograms or in, in, in pounds. Now about pounds, now one pound is basically 0 0.454 of the kilogram of force. Again, this is the unit which is popular in the United States. This is the unit which is popular in, in Europe and other countries. And to tell you the truth, very <laughs> rarely people are using this abbreviation. They're using kg. It's assuming that this is actually a kilogram of force, which is the gravity with which Earth, our planet Earth, not Mercury or any other planet, which with, which with Earth attracts a, uh, an object of mass of one kilogram of mass, right? So sometimes it's uh, this, sometimes um, I remember using this with a G, capital G, also another way, even rarer than this one. So this one is more scientific, I would say, definition of the kilogram of force. Um, and, uh, and again, in, in our everyday life, we just say kilogram, assuming that this is the weight of uh, an object of a mass of one kilogram, which is kilogram of force. But we're saying just kilogram. Um, and there are some other units of measurements, more, even more rarer, even rarer used in, in everyday life. And uh, I don't think it's very interesting anyway. So, um, what's interesting is that we are using pounds and kilograms of force. And again, pounds is about this uh, from the kilogram of force, and kilogram of force is 9.8 newtons. So that's how you can transfer all these units into newtons uh, for I don't know, some kind of scientific calculations. Or otherwise, if you get some answer in, in newtons because you're using system C for all other components of your calculations, and uh, if at the very end you have to really convert it into kilograms of force, you're just using this conversion. Okay, so that's it for today. I do recommend you to read all the notes for this lecture. They are presented on unizor.com in Physics 14, uh, 14's lecture. Um, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.